What's up, y'all? I'm going to tell you the story of a White Claw-fueled player who ruined a D&D &D game for his girlfriend and their friends. So hit like for the algorithm and let's do this. This guy decides to be a psychopath because it's what his character would do and then asks why I won't let him play at my table again. So, never thought I'd be writing one of these, but after years of DMing for long-term campaigns and one-shots, I finally had a bad one, lol. My cousin asks me to DM a one-shot for her, her boyfriend, and their friend because she wants to start her own campaign with the two of them and wants to get a refresher on the rules after not playing in years and the other two have never played. I'm always excited to teach people the game and I've probably introduced over a dozen people to the game at this point. Well, this sounds like a pretty promising start. Just a group of family and friends playing a game. What could go wrong? Let's continue. We have a three hour character building session and it goes great. Everyone is so excited about the game and is really interested in how the game works. The only problem we run into is while my cousin and her friend let me help them through every step of the creation, the boyfriend is having some issues choosing and wouldn't let me know when he was ready for me to help again, so he was sitting there for 20 minutes doing nothing in between. No problem, I'm not there to force people to make decisions, and we have a week to decide. I leave that night letting everyone know that they can text me with any character creation questions and to work on a one paragraph backstory to ground the character. When introducing new players to the game, I like to start them with the option for a pre-generated character. How many times have you met for Dungeons and Dragons only to have multiple hours spent making characters and not even playing the game? Then we get to the day of the one shot. This is where it went bad. I show up and guess whose character sheet is not finished. Not only that, but I'm holding open the pages in the book for him to look at and copy onto his sheet and he is purposely ignoring me to look up some bootleg site that it's confusing him. Wasn't Wikidot, I would have liked him to use that. So we get done with that and there's an hour wasted. We finally start the one shot and it's pretty standard stuff. I'm not winning any writing awards for this story, but I think it encompasses all the parts of D&D. Yep, could have saved an hour of everyone's time by just handing out pre-generated characters to people that didn't have a character ready on time. Story opens up in town square and goblins are attacking. Heroes all jump into action and slay them. Now this is where the boyfriend's unnatural game choices begin, and it should also be noted that this is where I notice he cracks his first white claw, lol. After they kill the goblins, the town guards come up to the group and ask them to come with them to the mayor's office for a reward. The boyfriend's tabaxi ranger doesn't like cops, so he runs into the woods? Okay, I'm all about player agency, so I'm cool with it. But then he bitches for the next 15 minutes as he missed out on the gold reward and RP with the mayor getting the main quest of tracking down the women the goblins have been kidnapping the past few weeks. Then they get sent to Magic Shop for some free supplies and he decides to sit on the roof while they go in, then proceeds to bitch that he didn't get any magic items. My cousin asks the mayor for a guide to show them the way out of town. So I make up a 14 year old boy stereotypical nerd who is in charge of the mayor's dietary needs and saving up for school. Running off by yourself, perching on the roof like Batman, I'm getting serious edgelord vibes here. But it seems like the player doesn't even understand that it's a co-op game. There's nothing edgier and more dark and mysterious than a nerd playing D&D while slamming back White Claws. While they're in the magic shop, they insight check Eugene and I say, he looks nervous, because they rolled an 11. He's nervous because the magic shop owner is the dragon that controls the goblins and is working with the mayor to kill adventurers who stand in their way. They don't ask him any more questions and proceed out of town. As soon as Eugene is about to leave them, the tabaxi badass decides he's gonna try and stab Eugene in the neck. The party saves Eugene by throwing him in the river and the boyfriend is all pissed off that they didn't let him kill a child. So I guess Eugene is the harmless NPC that our heroic tabaxi ranger tried to attack. There's definitely more things going on with this dude than White Claw. This pattern gets more common as more White Claws go down the hatch and we get awesome moments like him asking, why they even would be interested in saving the women, or telling the party if they don't choose the path he does, he's quitting, hiding underneath books while the party solves two puzzle rooms without him, and trying to steal the final blow on the dragon after he wasted the whole fight doing nothing and what I can only describe as trying to outsmart the DM, not the dragon. Ultimately, I let him know things like it's not my job as a DM to give his character a reason to go on my adventure. He needs to react to things like a normal person and he wouldn't be allowed at my table anytime soon since he made the game unfun for the other players. Now my cousin isn't sure if she wants to run a campaign with her boyfriend in it. TLDR. Douchebag drunk boyfriend ruins the game for his girlfriend and best friend by acting like a psychopath. In my opinion, the best way to handle a player like this is a conversation. 
explain that this is a co-op game and running off by yourself and committing heinous crimes isn't exactly the tone we're going for. Tell me what you think in the comments. See ya!